Christ says, I want to sit in your garden. And Israel, what did he say to Israel? He said, I will meet you between the cherubim on the mercy seat, right? That's what he said. I'll meet you between the cherubim on the mercy seat. Not under the tree down by the creek, not over there somewhere, but between the cherubim. To you today, what does he say? I'll meet you, I'll meet you, but where? In your garden. Because God has built a garden, which is the garden of Eden, in you. Every one of you have that garden there. In that garden, there is everything you need in your life. Amen. You will never have a lack while your garden is functioning correctly. Adam never had to go to the shop to buy anything. Adam never had to go outside the garden to get anything. He lived, I don't know for how long he lived in that garden, but he had everything that he needed. God said you can eat the fruit of all the trees in the garden except just for one. Don't worry about it. There's plenty of trees there. And there's another tree there that I'd like you to be interested in. That's the tree of life. So, a garden enclosed in my sister, my spouse. But he said, you are a spring. Shut up. Now, if you want to have a good garden, you need to have a good water supply. Isn't that right? In Brisbane, and uh, the southern or the inland part of Queensland, just over the mountains, we've had a drought for five years. And the dams that supply our water have gone down and down and down and down until we had very severe water restrictions. We weren't allowed to wash our motor car with, with the hose. We're not allowed to hose our garden. We're not allowed to use excess water. We had to put a timer on our shower so that when we bathed at night, four minutes, no more, we had to save water. Well, we've had some heavy rain since then and the dams have started to fill up a bit, so it's not quite so bad. But you see, if you want a good garden, you must have good water supply. But he said, you are a spring shut up. Why is that? The water supply for your garden that's going to keep all the trees functioning and even more than that, I'll tell you about it in a minute. He said you're a spring shut up. The spring is shut up. There's nothing coming out of it. Oh God. When Jesus Christ was in the temple on the day of the feast, what did he say? If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And out of his innermost being there would flow a river. A river of living water. Do you know that out of the garden of Eden, there was a river that flowed out of Eden. And when it got on the outside of the garden, it broke into four heads and it watered the whole earth. Do you understand that? God's garden is in you. There's a spring in there, but it's shut up. God intended that that spring be open and that the water from your garden would flow out to water the world. In chapter 37 of Ezekiel, the, the prophet there saw a valley of dry bones. Just a great heap of dry bones. Why are they dry bones? Because there was no water. No one took the water of life out to them. They are out there today, beloved. Out there in the world, there's thousands of dry bones. Why? Because our spring is shut up. The river is not flowing. Come on. See, we have been so orientated in the church concept. The pastor is the one that supplies the water. The pastor, you know, the pastor, they, they 
study the Word and they get the fountain working good and they are able to impart the living water. What about the people sitting down there? Come on, you've got to have the same river flowing. You are responsible to water the earth. And God has put a spring in you. I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is the fountain of the living water for the world. Oh Lord, in your garden there are a number of plants. What are they? They're all aromatic plants. You know what that means? That's an English word, which means that everyone has a perfume. Perfume. In your garden, God has put all of these plants that have a beautiful perfume. What does a woman wear perfume for? Come on, some of you women, you must know. You, I'm sure you wear some perfume, at least on special occasions. <laughs> Why do you wear perfume? Well, I'm going to tell you. You wear perfume to attract something. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yeah. Somebody walks past it. Oh boy, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it was the perfume that got them. God says, in your garden, I have planted all the trees have a perfume. All the trees have a perfume. What for? So when you walk past somebody, the plants in your garden, the trees in your garden, will give off a beautiful aroma. And people will say, wow, there's something about that person. Something about that. Oh, it won't be just smell. It'll be something that will catch their attention, just like the perfume does. When people say, I don't know, I've met a lot of people, but I haven't met very many people just like you. Uh. That's your garden. Yes. That's the perfume yes. of your garden. Yes. And what does it, what does the woman say? Come now, north wind, blow upon my garden. Not too much now, just a gentle breeze. South wind, come and join. And let that breeze blow, not too strong, just let it blow to blow the fragrance of my life over the wall of the garden that others can smell the fragrance of my garden because Christ lives in your garden he said to Israel I'll meet you between the cherubim on the mercy seat for you people today for me God says, I'll meet you. Christ says, I'll meet you in your garden. I'll meet you in your garden. Have you been looking after it? What did God say to Adam in Genesis chapter 2? I want you to take care of your garden. There's your garden. The garden of Eden. Everything you want is in there. I want you to take care of it. And I want you to guard it. Why? Because there's an enemy that would like to get in there and mess it up. Yeah. 